Hey, Fletch. Uh, hey, this is the first up. year you haven't been named to the Pro Bowl since 2014. Uh, what was your reaction to, to that streak ending? And do you still feel like you can play at that level? Now, I know I can still play at that level. I mean, obviously, I uh, didn't have the numbers this year. Uh, it was kind of a little up and down for me. And, you know, um, you know, I kind of expected uh, expected it, but you know, all I can do is you know go out and uh, finish the season strong. And you know, I still know I'm the one of the best D tackles in the league. So uh, I'm not salty about it at all. Uh, I'm happy for the guys that um, that made it, um, and uh, even happy for Hargrave. You know, I know he think he's a, I know he's an alternate, and I'm happy I'm happy for him. So it's always good. Uh, I know I can continue to get better, and uh, I'll be back next year. Go ahead, Ed, and then Martin Frank. Yeah, hey, Fletch. Uh, speaking of of you know next levels and stuff like that you seem to have taken your game to a different level these past few weeks what what do you attribute that to i mean just knowing the position that you're in and the normal position that i'm i'm in you know um i mean obviously um you know you, you're in a position um <clears throat> you want to i want to play this way early in the season but obviously like i said the ball just really wasn't bouncing the way that uh the, the way that it is now i think it now it's just uh, comfortable in the system um know what to expect and it's going out and, and putting it out on the field you know uh Everybody's on the same page up front, uh, and really just you know just um, really just maximizing all the opportunities that I'm getting right now. Go ahead, Martin, and then Tim. Hi, Fletch. Uh, happy holidays to you. Um, I wanted to ask you about about Slay. I mean, you know, you've been with him since uh, last season and everything, and you know the fact that he he was selected to the Pro Bowl. I mean, just what he means to you guys on defense, and and what did you think about him lining up at? wide receiver in the last game. <laughs> I mean, he talked about it and uh, obviously uh, he got a chance to do it. Uh, right now he's, uh, you know, the, the best decoy in the league right now. So uh, we give him a hard time about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously uh, <clears throat> we figure, you know, coach may give him the ball next time. He may not, you never know. Uh, but I know he's prepared for it. Um, actually, you know, I'm sure that you saw the whole bench get excited for him when he went in the game. You know, that's, that's, those are the type of things you want to support, you know, support your teammates, no matter on offense or defense or special teams. So that was a fun moment for us. We was all excited to see him uh, go out there and execute the play. He had one job to do, and he did it. Tim and then Bo. What's up, Fletch? Uh, you were you weren't shy earlier in the season saying that you weren't fully comfortable with the the way that you were being used. Um, you know, this this past week they they lined you up outside, and you ended up having a lot of success uh, there. Just curious about sort of the um, you know, the developing relationship with Gannon, and uh, you know, was it a matter of kind of him having to earn your trust and, and uh, you know, kind of grow that relationship? Yeah, obviously, you know, we, you got to support, you know, JG. You know, obviously, um, he communicates with all of us all the time, and I think he just put his best players in the best position um, week in and week out. And, you know, you respect, a, you know, you respect your D.C. that much, um, you know, to put his, put the, you know, put your best players in the best position. Is, um, it felt good. I moved outside, I think, once before this season, and I had a little success with it. Uh, but you know, um, last week he he asked, he came and talked talked to me on the side. I asked me what I thought about. It. I said, "Hey, I don't mind, you know, moving out there and you know, give it a change up." And um, had a, had a couple of good rushes out there. But obviously, you know, just enjoying it, um, you know, being out there and being moved around a little bit uh, from the, from the left side, especially being on the outside. So it's a good thing, just good good, good communication with him, and uh, you know, he's just letting the boys up front eat. Go ahead, Bo, and then Mike K. On Slay, uh, Fletch. Um, his his personality, like how how talkative he is. Um, do you ever want him to stop talking? And then was he always like that in college too? He was always like that in college, and I think if he's not talking, something's wrong, because you can hear him uh, on the other side of the locker room talking, or you know, obviously arguing with somebody. He's so competitive, and he loves his teammates. You know, that's the biggest thing about it. You know, he'll argue with with an offensive lineman or uh, if you know if, if with anybody. You know, he's so competitive about everything he do. And you got to respect him. You know, you respect a guy like that. Uh, I've been, like I said, I've been around Noah Slay since high school, actually. We took our official visit together at Mississippi State. So that's how long I've been knowing him. Go ahead, Mike, and then Jeff. Hey, Fletch. Uh, question kind of out of left field. Uh, Joe Judge is playing uh, the, the Eagles fight song and, like, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to get ready for you guys for Philly. What's the weirdest thing a coach has done in practice to get you prepared for an opponent? I think Joe's from Philly, right? He's a yeah. See, that's why he's playing. You know, you know, he's he's a big Philly guy. Uh, you know, respect him. You know, uh, he's a Mississippi State guy also, um, and uh, you know, can't help but respect him. You know, but uh, I think the weirdest thing I maybe uh, <clears throat> no, I think in college. I mean, when we played uh, 
Ole Miss, uh, obviously, is, is a rivalry for us. But uh, we used to do, we used to have a lot of things going on during practice, I, uh, and you know, around around the building um, that I, I don't think I should disclose, but some pretty weird stuff. We have time for one more, and then we'll get Jalen Hurts. So go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Fletch, you've historically had strong December's. Um, how's your body feel this year versus previous, uh, you know, late season charges? I mean, I feel good, uh, especially, uh, you know, the last few games that we've played. I think our offense uh, has done a really good job of time of possession, uh, you know, just controlling the ball and, you know, keeping the defense off the field. Uh, I feel good. I think we play as a, as a defense, I think, 48, 49 plays um, on Sunday, and I think the offense won at the time of possession. So um, you got to love when your offense is winning the time of possession. It keeps, you know, keep, obviously keeps your defense off the field, obviously keep the reps off the body um, to keep us going fresh into this, um, this, this next game that we're looking forward to. Jason, are you as, uh, are you an easy crier in other aspects of your life? Uh, yeah, I get a, I'm a pretty emotional person if that's, you know, I feel like I'm pretty stoic until I'm not and then it all comes out. But, um, you know, I, the guys around here know, you know, I can get pretty emotional talking to the team or, um, you know, even just listening to a sad country song. Yeah, I can get pretty emotional. Are there any, like, movies or, or songs in particular that, that tend to get you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, any type of, like, uh, you know, movie that's like a journey and a person overcoming obstacles and things like that tend to get me. I mean, um, so whether that's in song form, movie form, book form, yeah, I, I'll get, I can get emotional during stuff like that. Go ahead, Jeff, and then John McMullen. Bo kind of took my question, but I, you know, you've, you've been a little more emotional this year with us, and I don't know what it is. Uh, is the therapy of it, or is there something about just being at this stage in your career and do you take time to reflect things on, on things or is it just a kind of an age thing or I don't know. know. Yeah. I, maybe my testosterone's going down. Uh, I hear <laughs> CTE can make you uh, more uh, emotionally uh, impulsive. I have no idea. Um, no, I think um, I do think age has something to do with it. And I think, um, you know, you, you become more reflective, you know, things that you've, been through you can kind of draw comparisons on I mean I hated I, I was making the joke about country music or folk music and these are like all these kind of like sad music genres or things that I hated as a kid and then when you grow up and you've experienced a lot of stuff it's like, oh man that's what that guy's talking about okay that makes sense now so you know I think that that all kind of plays into it as you get older you you can you, your ability to empathize with people and uh you know uh you know, understand, you know, how hard life can be sometimes, um, you know, um, it's going to make you more emotional. Go ahead, John, and then Ruth. Hey, Jason. Um, it's kind of old hat for you at this point, but what does uh, making another Pro Bowl mean to you? And, you know, Lane and Jordan uh, didn't make it, weren't named as alternates. So how, how do you react to that? Well, you know, obviously, you know, it's an honor whenever you make the Pro Bowl. Um, but, you know, we all know it's an imperfect science. I've made, you know, I've been an all-pro twice and not made the Pro Bowl. So, you know, I think that, you know, I think there's a lot of guys that are really good players. And on my line in particular, the two tackles we have, I think, are as good as any, if not better, uh, than anybody in the league. So, um, you know, they, they know what we think of them. I wish uh, – Everybody else did, but, you know, that's kind of the way the Pro Bowl voting works. So, um, you know, it tends to be sporadic and, you know, whoever the hot media guys are for, for the year end up usually getting it. And, um, you know, that's kind of just the way it goes. So, you know, honored for me, happy for everybody else that's invited. But definitely, you know, I think that there's some other guys on our line, and especially with the way we've been playing for, um, you know, Ever since, you know, about week five or six, I think that I could probably get in there. Go ahead, Ruben, then Zach. Hey, Jace. Uh, did you, you've had good lines here before. You've had good running backs here before. Um, mm -hmm. You've had Stout here before, but you guys have never run the ball like this. You lose Landon, you lose Driscoll, Miles gets hurt, Jordan gets hurt, and the thing still keeps rolling. Um, mm -hmm. Did you ever think you'd see 
the day where you guys were running for 180 to 200 yards a game? And, and how do you keep it rolling with all these moving parts? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's tough to run the ball um, when teams know you're going to run the ball. Um, you know, I think when you run the ball a lot, it becomes the, the lanes, you know, become smaller and teams really hone in on trying to stop it. So it's it's definitely a hard thing to do. And, um, you know, we've had some really good offensive lines, some really good backs here in the past. Like, as you said, Jeff Stoutland's been here. and um, But, you know, I think this year, you know, obviously we've, we've stuck to it. We've run the ball more just on a attempt basis more than we ever have in my career, certainly. Um, you know, even, you know, I don't even know if we ran it this much when Chip Kelly was the head coach. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, we're really good at it. The coach trusts us. I think, uh, I mean, you have to give credit to, you know, Nick and Shane and, you know, in my opinion, especially Stout, um, for putting some really, really good plans together. Uh, having the quarterback like Jalen who – can keep the ball and teams have to respect that gives us a lot of even boxes and fair opportunities to run into rather than, you know, running into loaded boxes with a, a drop back passer. So, you know, I really think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the whole package that really allows us to, to do what we're doing this year and uh, the coaches trust in it. And, um, you know, that's, that all kind of culminates into uh, probably the best rushing attack I've been a part of uh, over the last at least seven games. We have time for one more, so go ahead, Zach. Hey, Jason, as a quick follow-up to that, which rushing offense was better, this one or the 2013 rushing offense? And then also, I, I was I was curious, did you see this coming earlier in the season or when you guys shifted to this approach, uh, did you kind of see it come together then? I guess I'll answer the first one first. I don't want to – I mean, we had some really good players in 2013. I mean, the, obviously the Sean McCoy – you know, the best running back I've uh, been able to play with in uh, terms of just, you know, so dynamic. The ability to make a big play at any second was unbelievable. Um, you know, I think uh, the offensive line we had was tremendous. Uh, you know, Jason Peters, Evan Mathis, Todd Harriman's, and a very young Lane Johnson um, is a really good offensive line. Um, you know, we really – I still remember that first Redskins game in 2013. They had no answer. Um, and, you know, we could do whatever we want throughout the whole game. And, um, you know, I thought that um, – so it's hard to compare. I mean, I don't – I think we have some really, really good players on this team too. We have a great offensive line again. Um, but there's a lot of other things too and uh, that go into it. So um, – and then as far as uh, as far as the second thing, um, you know, I don't want to say that – you know, I, you don't really – see coming uh, results, I think. I don't really try and focus on, you know, what, you know, the result is going to be. You kind of focus on, um, you know, what you're doing every day. And I think, you know, even from training camp on, we knew that we could run the ball if we need to. We knew that we um, we have the ability to do this and we have the guys to do it and to, and to be able to, you know, take charge of a line of scrimmage. And I think that that's kind of what you – what we knew going into it. Um, and then, you know, I think that the results follow as long as you're continuing to try and improve and, and, and iron out all these little things throughout the course of a season. You know? So I think, um, you know, I always knew that we were, you know, um, you know, capable of doing this, I guess. Hey, Devontae, uh, on Tuesday night, the catch you had on the sideline, did you know you were in immediately? And, and how hard did you lobby to, to try to get that call overturned? Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I kind of had that awareness on the sideline of where my feet are. Um, so, yeah, I knew I was in. Um, trying to point it to the ref. They're like, I had my feet in. They're going to spot right there. Go ahead, Martin, and then John Clark. Hey, Devontae. So, um, what kind of were, were you thinking when uh, Darius Slay came into the huddle, um, you know, for that one play? And, and did, you, did he really want the ball? Like, did you think he was going to get it? And what was kind of going on there? Um, kind of in practice, we, we was kind of ripping it. Um, I mean, the main thing was just him running full speed because we got to practice, he ain't never running full speed. So it was just like, man, get out here and run full speed. You talking about you so fast and you, you out here jogging. Go ahead, John, and then Ed Kratz. Wait, did, did he think he was he was going to be open on the play? Nah, he kind of he knew it wasn't going to come to him. All right, thanks.
God, hey, God. hey, Devante, uh, we saw you in uh, three-point stance lined up next to Jordan Mailata there. Uh, how many times do you think you've done that in your career? Um, I mean, that's that's the first time in an actual game. I mean, we, we ripped it at practice a couple times. I mean, I just always got down in three-point stands just trying to be funny. You like that wrinkle? Yeah, it's cool. Go ahead, Ed, and then Josh. Yeah, Devontae, I was going to ask you about that. But I, to follow up on that, you know, Co Coach Sirianni talks about watching a lot of football and getting different ideas. And, you know, we've seen some of that with you kind of lined up to next to Mulata and Slay on the field as a receiver. Uh, how, how exciting is that to have the possibility of just doing different things, uh, you know, to come to Nick Sirianni's mind during the course of a week? Uh, I mean, just try to always keep defense guessing, never give any tips of what we're going to do. So I'm um, just giving them different things to look at things that kind of catch them by surprise. So when we get out there, it's just like, oh, what are they doing? They're, they'll never really know what to expect. Go ahead, Josh, and then Bo. Hey, Vontae, there were there were replays of, um, you know, after Greg Ward's catch and then even Jalen Reger's catch on third down of how happy you were and, and celebrating uh, with them. I guess what's the feeling that, that brings you when, you know, guys that aren't getting the, the one reps in the receiver room make plays, um, and, you know, uh, on the ways that they prepare? I mean, those guys come in every day just like anybody else on this team, and they work. So, um, like I've always said, when when the plays, when the ball comes to them, they're going to make their plays. So, I mean, that's that's the main thing, knowing those guys come in every day. They they come, they work hard, they out there and practice the attention to detail and everything that they do. So, when the ball do come to them, they they make their plays. And, I mean, as a teammate, you, you're just excited to see that, that those guys are keeping their head on straight, still locked in on everything and making the plays when they need to be made. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Bo. Uh, hey, Devonta, you've had some experience playing a team a second time, I guess, uh, in the SEC. Um, you, you've got this Giants team for the for the second time. Uh, do you notice what is it like for you when you play a team a second time? Is there is it a little bit more chippy? Uh, do you, are you surprised by things they do? How does that how does that work for you? Um, kind of the main thing is um just doing things differently. Um, they kind of seen what you did the first time, so you can't go back out there the second time doing the same things. You have to kind of switch it up. We have time for one more, so go ahead, Zach. Hey, Devontae, uh, Kevin Patolo is around your position group quite a bit. What do you know about him, and I guess what can you share with us about him? Uh, I mean, KP, he, he's a great coach. I mean, the details of anything in offense, he, he knows. So he's kind of he's kind of the, the coach as a receiver that you go to when you have a question about any little thing, um, you know, Position coaches, they're kind of with their positions. But him, I mean, you can go with him about anything because he, he knows everything. So any little detail that you need about a run, pass, uh, this technique, that technique, um, that's, that's who you go to. Go ahead, Bo. Go ahead, Bo. Hey, Devontae, I'm 